Do you struggle with watercolour application and think you can't paint? Well think again because in this tutorial I'll show you how to paint a yellow rose with easy to follow steps. Let's get into it. Okay, I've attached my paper to my watercolour board like this and done a really simple outline of the rose which I've traced down. Now we provide a free trace down line drawing and reference photograph and I'll tell you later on how you can obtain these. You can of course draw your drawing freehand if you prefer but this is just for speed. So the paints I'm using are from Schmincke and the colours are chromium yellow hue, pure yellow, yellow orange, perillion green and vermilion light but as always use whichever colours that you have within your own set and the brushes I've chosen to use today are from Zenart from the Fine Line Miniature Set. These are different size synthetic brushes here and have a really fine point as well as a little flat brush there that I use for blending as well as a number eight round and this is from their Black Tulip Set. I have a colour chart here that I've used to match my colours and I'll put a card on the top of your screen right now if you'd like to um, make your own. Okay, so I'm doing a really watery mix of chromium yellow hue here. Um, if you don't have this colour, you could use something like a uh, cadmium lemon or that kind of uh, that kind of lemony tone. And I'm using my number eight round brush here to cover the entire rose, and this will form our base colour. If you are new to watercolour painting, I highly recommend that you watch this tutorial all the way through so that you can see that tricky process unfold and see how the by building up your different layers you can create um, a really strong watercolour painting even by working in light gentle layers like this. So we're using the number eight round just to take that paint all over, wet on dry, so we are applying the paint directly onto the paper like this, staying within the pencil lines. Okay, so making sure that everything's dry. And remember that watercolour is all about building up our layers slowly and carefully. Once it's dry, I'm going to mix the pure yellow along with another puddle of pure yellow with the yellow orange, as you can see. I'm using a smaller size brush here. This is a number, I think it's a number one size brush, but use anything that you have with a fine point. And I'm applying this to create our sort of second layer and start to think about the different colors and the placement of them within the, within the picture that you can see on your screen. Now, very recently, we did a little bit of a poll here on our YouTube channel, and lots of you have asked me to keep the reference photograph in screen throughout the tutorial. And because so many of you like it, that's what we're going to be doing in the future. So um, at the moment, it's at the top of your screen, as you can see, and I hope it isn't too much of a distraction for those of you that preferred it without, but I do think it helps you understand the process. As you can see, I've got this tiny little puddle of water on my palette, and I use it to clean my brush, pat it on my kitchen paper, and then blend the paint like this. If I were to dip my brush in the jar of water it can sometimes flood the brush with water and mean that the water spreads onto the paper and splurges the paint in the wrong direction. So just by having this tiny puddle of paint on my palette it really does help with the uh, application process. And I'm applying it, as you can see, staying out of the very pale colours on our first wash. And I'm patting my brush on that kitchen paper so that we don't flood the paper with water, as I've just explained. So just gently working through layer by layer, switching between the two yellow colours on my palette, as you can see. Now, as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, I have traced down my line drawing and it's entirely up to you whether you trace it down or draw it freehand. Some people just prefer to trace it down so that they can press on with the watercolour application, which is kind of what this channel is all about. Now, if you do want to access our line drawings and reference photographs, we now have three different ways to do it for this tutorial. So first of all, we have a Facebook group, which I will link in the description box below, along with all the equipment that we're using today. So just 
click through to there, join our Facebook group and you can have access to all our line drawings and reference photographs for these tutorials, as well as being able to post your own work there and have some feedback from our amazing members. Another way that you can obtain our line drawing is on our community tab. This is something that we've started to do recently here on YouTube and each week before we put each week before we post up the tutorial, the day before, generally speaking, we will post the line join on the community tab so that you can do a, screen, a screenshot or save it and then print it out that way. But for this tutorial, what I'm going to do is also put a clear line join right at the end of this video so that you can freeze the frame and print it out that way. So you've got three different ways for this tutorial. Okay, so now you can see I'm just mixing between these three colours and just blending it onto the paper like this, just having a close look at my reference photograph. Speaking of the reference photograph again, just to say that I have simplified this little rose for you. I'm not going to be putting every single um, fold and crease in it. It's just to simplify it so that you can have this kind of really beautiful, vibrant little yellow rose that you can be proud of. So it's a sim simplified version of this flower. Now I've chosen to work on mixed media paper today because as I said earlier, I do really like the kind of blending process of this paper, but it does handle really, really differently to the other paper that I really love, which is kind of like Archer, which is Archer's um, cold pressed or even a rough surface paper. And we have done a yellow lily painting tutorial using this very, very different paper. And if you'd like to watch that, I'll link it on the top of your screen now so that you can click through and watch that a little bit later on. So just in case it interests you so that you can see the difference with the two papers. So as you can see, I'm just using the tip of my brush here. It doesn't really matter what size you're using as long as it has a fine point like this. And as I said, just use whichever materials that you have within your own kit, but I will link everything in the description box underneath this video. You can see how I'm blending my paint onto the paper as well, just by applying the paint and then cleaning it in my tiny little puddle, patting it dry and blending it through, staying out of the very pale areas that I've applied at the very, very start. working right up to that pencil line to start with and then blending it through as usual. Okay, so we're just going to let that dry. When everything's absolutely dry, we can start to build up again, but I have to show you this that's just arrived in the post. I've bought this from Jackson's Art, and you can see this is a ceramic palette with lots of different compartments, and I'm going to use this throughout the rest of the tutorial to stop my colors sort of merging into each other. Okay, so now we're going to be mixing the um, yellow, yellow, sorry, yellow orange here. Um, and the consistency is still very watery. And I've also got a puddle of perilly and green. And I'm going to be dipping between the two as before. Like I said, make sure that your paint is absolutely dry on your paper. I've still got my little puddle of water in the center of my brand new lovely ceramic palette there and just dipping into that as I go through instead of my water jar as I've explained a little earlier on. So we can still see that lovely light yellow color underneath staying out of the palest areas and I'm using this really watered down perilene green to add a little bit of um, dimension. You can see if you look at the reference photograph it's kind of got this kind of grayish green color on the tips of the darker areas here and by using this very light wash of perilene green we can achieve that quite easily. Once again merging those colors together with a damp brush. 
And here I have the um, chromium yellow hue and just enhance some, some of the more lemony shades on the rose and just dropping in some of that perylene green wet on wet. And just continuing the process as you can see once again right up to the pencil line with my brush and then just blending it through as I would normally do switching between the two colors on my palette the two yellow colors I should say on my palette here but keeping out of that very pale lemon color that we applied to begin with And just add in that green tone with a tiny bit of the yellow to enhance the side of that petal there where we have that darker shade. But make sure that your um, adjoining petals are dry before you add that other color because of course the colors will bleed into each other and just merge together which is what you don't want them to do at this point. And then you can see me here just pulling up a little bit of that yellow tone into the very pale yellow just to give a bit of dimension. As I said, I have simplified it a little bit. We're not going to be putting all the different folds in, but just to give the idea that this has some dimension, we need to put this color in. And just working through each petal in turn making sure that you keep a close eye on your reference photograph to check that you've got the right colors in the right place
if you are finding value in this video, do give it a thumbs up. It's a free way of letting YouTube know that you like my channel. And you may also want to consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss new tutorials every single Tuesday. We're also on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour. Do consider joining us there. I just want to take a moment to tell you about our Patreon, which at the time of filming has four different membership levels, from mini weekly videos of doodles, vlogs and podcasts, to full-length botanical painting tutorials, which are exclusive to Patreon and are, of course, ad-free. If this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description below, plus it's a way for you to support my channel. Okay, so back to the job in hand. Everything's dry, I've cleaned up my palette and I'm going to be mixing up the same colours as before. This time in a slightly thicker consistency so it's less water using my number 5.0 round which has a really fine point. So the colours that I have mixed in my palette here are yellow orange and yellow orange with vermilion light. And I'm just applying these over the stamen and anther like this. Remember this is just our first wash of these tiny little elements within the plant and we're going to be building them up later on as we work through the tutorial. But for now we need to get that base colour in. So this is painting wet on dry yet again. and I still have my tiny little puddle of water on my palette there to blend out that paint. And you can see me dropping in another layer of that paint just to give it a little bit more dimension. These dry really, really quickly so they don't take very long to paint in at all. So just work through bit by bit. And you can take your time with watercolour painting. Okay, so I'm just adding a tiny bit of these colours, sort of mixing them together with a tiny bit of perylene green to create a kind of murky brown colour and using my number 2.0 round to apply and strengthen up those colours that we applied at the beginning. So it's building up that shadow tone as you can see, making sure of course that everything's really dry before we apply this layer. Notice how I'm using the tip of my brush to strengthen up the side of that petal as well. So not only am I applying the colour to sort of create the illusion of it being in shadow, but using that opportunity to really sharpen up the outside edge of that petal. And you can see how I'm using the tip of my damp brush to merge those colours together. Thank you. 
so I'm just using this colour just to add a little bit of kind of texture or shading at the tip of the petal as you can see here and now I'm adding a little bit more of the pure yellow and just enhancing some of the yellow tones within the petals. Watercolour has a tendency to dry lighter so I'm just building up the colours as I work through, once again blending them in with my damp brush. I'm just using the perylene green mix here to add that kind of fold that's in the top of that petal here and blending it through as before. And you can see how I'm switching between the colours on my palette here, just adding the colours where I feel it's necessary to build up some shape and some form because we don't want the petals to look flat, we want them to look as if they have some dimension. So just switching between my colours on my palette and blending through. Just adding a little bit of that darker value to the middle of the rose here. And you can see where I'm applying the colours with the tip of my, this would be I think a number 2.0 brush, but use, don't worry too much about your sizes, just use something that you have with a really sharp point. Something that you feel comfortable with. I think that's the important thing when you're painting with watercolour. To just use the, the brushes that you like the most. I really love these ones. These are the Fine Line Miniature Set from, Fi uh, from Zen Art Supplies. And um, I really, really love these brushes because, for, first of all, they're synthetic and they last quite a long time. And they give full control of the paint application. But like I said, use what you feel comfortable with. Just continuing to build up those colours, you can see once more that I'm staying out of that lighter tone and blending through that darker, sort of darker value on the sort of inside element of that little curve there, and then picking up my perylene mix. There's a tiny little fold on this petal here and you can see me picking up that um, light brown colour that I mixed earlier on to just apply it here because it was looking a little bit flat. Okay, so we have the vermilion light with a tiny bit of perylene going on to create a kind of brownie colour. 
and we're going to let these kind of dry on the palette a little bit before we apply them onto the rose just so that we have better control and you can see the small brush that I'm using here dipping it into my tiny puddle and picking up that dryer mix to have full control and working negatively around the little filaments that we have within the centre of the rose. If we were to use this wet it would kind of mean that we lose a little bit of control. Now I must apologise here as I was painting I didn't realise that my battery had um, expired on my camera so there's a little bit of painting that's happened without me filming it but you can see what I've done just by working around the small areas like that in exactly the same way as I did when I was beginning to film. It's just a few of the stamen and anther and filaments that I had been painting around negatively before my, my battery fell flat. So hopefully you can see what I've done there. Just continuing to work through the rows like this and taking this opportunity now to sharpen up any of the edges that have become maybe a little bit untidy as I work through. So it is a case at this point of looking at the, the reference photograph and enhancing any colours that you feel need strengthening. You can see me here just adding a little bit more detail where I feel it's necessary using the tip of my number 5.0 brush. Everything's completely dry and of course the paint on my palette is also dry so that I have full control that I mentioned earlier on. Remember at the end of this tutorial I will put up a line drawing so that you can maybe do a screenshot and save it for yourself if you don't particularly want to go over to Facebook and do it that way and like I said we'll also put it on the community tab for you to have um, that way as well. So stay until the end and you can print off your line drawing that way if you would prefer to do it. And I'll also put a playlist at the top of all the botanical paintings that we've done here on our YouTube channel so that you can click through and have a look at those at the same time. At this point um, it's a case of just doing a plain water wash to merge everything together. I like to do this quite a bit in my paintings, just using water and a really light touch to glaze over everything to kind of merge all the colours together and then you must let them dry before adding any more details. So I'm going to stop talking at this point and I'm going to let you listen to some music while I continue to do the sort of um, finishing touches, making sure that everything's dry. I'll stop talking. Stay until the end so that you can get access to that line join if you want it and I'll see you next week. <laughs>